evening, everybody. And, and thank you for taking time off your busy schedules to make this forum. Um, we have a very tight agenda tonight. Um, it's an agenda that has one item, and we specifically wanted to make sure that in, in, in designing the agenda, we give as much time as is possible for listening to your input. And we also felt that it was important that before starting the meeting, we give you the opportunity to view the different plans uh, that we have laid out for the Main Street Corridor project. <coughs> and before we get started formally, I thought it might be helpful for us here to uh, hear who is who and who is doing what. Uh, up here at the table with me is Chairman Cotino from the Board of Selectmen and Vice Chairman Claire Wright from the Board of Selectmen. <coughs> Your staff who've been working on this project are led by, where is he? Dev Daltorio, the town engineer, facilities coordinator. He is our project manager for the Main Street Corridor project. Assisted by Elaine Lazarus, director of land use and town operations, and John Westerling, your director of public works. I should also mention we have received a great deal of support from other town staff, Fire Chief Slayman from the Fire Department, uh, Chief Lee from Hockington Police Department, uh, Maria Glynn in the Town Manager's Office has been instrumental in coordinating some of the meetings. We have also received tremendous support from the Land Use Department. We are also supported by two consultants <coughs> from VHB, John Bouchard, up there, and Greg Russell. Uh, they have been the consultants uh, putting together most of the materials that we have submitted to the state. They have also been responsible for uh, coordinating the information that we share in our public <coughs> meetings. They've also been instrumental in making sure that we continue as a community to receive support from the state with regard to how this project is going to be funded. I should also uh, perhaps begin by referring to what I heard from Brian Hare, namely that it's been over 20 years that the town has been discussing what to do with the Main Street Corridor project. And in my, in, in my eight years with the town, I have learned several things about the project. First of all, the Main Street Corridor project represents a collaborative effort to determine the safety, access, aesthetic, parking, and utility-related issues that contribute to the need to reconfigure reconstruct and realign Main Street. It's been made very clear to us that in pursuing this project, we have to account for how we minimize impacts on environmental, <coughs> cultural, business, residents, and historic resources. There have been a few guiding principles that we have followed throughout this process, but one really stands out and it symbolizes why we are here tonight. Uh, namely, we were charged with building a cooperative process between key stakeholders, citizens, and state-level office officials and offices. Our goal is to ensure that groups can share in the collective vision for the Downtown Corridor Project, even as they hold differing opinions on how this vision could be reached. Our process has been designed to create and foster an open dialogue about the different needs in the project area, and that's one of the main reasons why here tonight. Our meetings, our public meetings, are predicated on the assumption and strong belief that residents and businesses in town have an intimate understanding of existing conditions and a collective vision for the future. I can tell you, at the time I interviewed for the position of the town manager for this community, and the eight years I have spent working for this community, 
it has been demonstrated to me very strongly that this community almost has an innate ability to work towards a common goal. And I'm hopeful that even in this process, we'll be able to fulfill that goal uh, and that characteristic that this community has possessed for many, many years. To incorporate the knowledge from the community into the decision-making process, the Main Street Corridor Project has relied and will continue to rely on public input through a variety of small and large group meetings, public workshops, public forum, and one-to-one -one meetings. We also have in the past relied on the advice of a committee that the town put together. And that committee worked towards accomplishing several things, including securing the design money for this project at town meeting, defining the broad scope and elements for the project, and laid the foundation for what we're discussing tonight. From these meetings, we gained useful insights, including which impacts should be avoided when considering various aspects of this project. In summary form, what have we learned so far? Number one, improve safety for motorists, pedestrians, and bicycles. Number two, realign the Main Street intersection. Number three, incorporate traffic calming. Number four, integrate a bike and pedestrian facility component. In addition, add to the green space in the downtown area, restore and strengthen the town common, minimize impacts on landowners and disruption to businesses and residents along the corridor, and as I've said to some of you who I've spoken to many, many a times, this is a very large project. I've worked on many, many or several Main Street improvement projects. This is the largest project I've ever seen. Um, and also, we've been asked, we have learned two other things. Namely, how will the town pay for this project? And finally, Every workshop, public meeting that I've attended, the big thing has been parking, parking, parking. And I'm sure tonight we'll hear a lot of comments and insights as to how we can best build a common vision towards addressing the parking issue in the downtown area. So based on those lessons learned, I want to now turn over the process to John Bouchard from VHB, who will explain to you how we have addressed the concerns raised so far, how we have incorporated your suggestions into this plan. And remember, the main reason why you're here tonight is to continue to receive input, listen to your comments, and find the best way of incorporating them into the plan. This is not going to be the last meeting. In fact, we scheduled this meeting as a prelude to a public forum that is going to be coordinated by Mass DOT. And at this point, I'll pass the mic over to John. Thank you, Norman. Good evening, everyone. After what Norman said, I almost want to start taking questions. Yeah. I'm going to hit some of the specifics of the project. A um, couple of key points, the project goals, you'll hear a little bit of review of some of the things that have been offered. Um, one of the primary uh, points tonight is that the plans that we're presenting tonight are preliminary. As much work that's gone into them, they're still preliminary. So there are areas where we'll say this is proposed or that's proposed. Reason being is it's probably not set in stone, we can tweak things. We have representatives from, from Mass DOT that are advising us um, on uh, some of those, uh, some of the requirements that dictate what we have to do, but we're, we're trying to negotiate through a little bit, you know, I'll call it a minefield at times, but we're trying to negotiate between benefits for the community, uh, meeting the needs of, of the funding and the permitting agencies and the, and the other stakeholders, but understanding that it's a community project through your downtown. So um, 
key points there. It's preliminary. I want to hear your comments. The people that walk it, drive it every day, see things that I, as a professional engineer, don't see every day. I mean, I come here, I, you know, I open up the traffic signal cabinet, I can see what the timings are, I can see what some of the views are, um, what the parking conditions are, but those that drive it every day in the winter, you know, when it, this area ices up, the sun is difficult on some mornings in November, once we turn the clocks back, this is a tough location. The public safety officials give us input on some of their challenges, obviously, and how we can integrate those into the design. So um, I want to take your comments that we, and, you know, I happen to be like kind of the facilitator on the, the design side, but we want to take your comments, we want to address them, uh, but we do have some goals and challenges and have you be part of the process. So that you can see that, you know, it, I, I'm not going to be able to do everything, but we're not going to be able to do everything that everybody wants, obviously. But being part of the process in understanding, so when you, you, you know, you bump into someone that, you know, at the supermarket or you bump into someone on the street or at the, at, you know, a business or another town meeting and say, yeah, you know, they're, they're doing this and they're impacting this. Yeah, but it, we, we went to that meeting, we heard why they couldn't do this or why this is better for some other things. So it's part of an evolution to the design plans. As I said, I, I don't want to, I'm going to keep reiterating, we're preliminary, I want input, I want to make some changes and address some of those concerns. Um, but, um, you know, I'm going to try and bring you through the process a little bit. The plans that were out uh, in the uh, other room as you came in are those plans that were submitted to MassDOT uh, back in June, which are under review. I'm going to go over some of that stuff. And, you know, this, I'm hoping everyone can see all right because we left some of the lights on so you'll be able to write down some notes. Uh, I'll get to those maybe toward the end, and I have certain excerpts of some of those plans that I'm going to hit uh, over the course of my presentation. I don't normally work with a microphone. I have a, mu I have a loud enough voice. But TV, they said, hey, the people at home have to hear you. They can't hear me if I don't have the mic. So I'll do my best. I would like to try and get through most of the presentation. But if something pops up and you say, I, I don't understand that, or what does that mean there, just raise your hand. And I'll, I'll try to stay with that particular point and then go on. And then we're going to stay you know, as long as needed to answer questions from the design plans. And then we can, we can certainly swing back to certain slides uh, that are uh, on the board here. So our um, downtown corridor project generally runs from Wood Street to Ash Street. So from, you know, they, everyone had a handout either at the table or there was some out in the back. We'll get more to those if, if, if they were all used up. And as part of that handout, there was a second sheet, uh, which is double-sided, that you can write some comments down, tri-fold it, and mail it to the town engineer and we'll take those and add those into the public record that we've had tonight, and then be able to come back and say that the, you know, compile them into different to topics and categories to be able to come back with a report to the selectmen in the town that these are some things that were brought up, excellent ideas, can't do this, can't do this, or this is how we would suggest doing this other, doing it a different way, so. So I'm seeing a different screen here, but you're not seeing it there. Mike, what'd you do to me? You didn't touch nothing. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, there we go. But now it's not showing me up here. All right. So our, our kind of our agenda was the open forum when you first came in. We're going to do our presentation, and then we're going to take questions and answers. I guess I'll have to look at this because my screen's not changing here. The town applied to Mass DOT to reconstruct Main Street as part of the Transportation Improvement Program. And some of the bullets here is that that kind of establishes the, criteria, the design criteria. It dictates a little bit of the framework. Uh, it controls the cost and schedule. The town participates in the regional planning agency, which uh, for Hopkinton is uh, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, which is actually out of the Boston area, but circles out along um, to, uh, to 495, some of the towns, Hopkinton, South Row, North Row, some of those all. So you kind of get lumped into a Boston area, but they control the money and how it's distributed by some of those regions. So we're going to stay, we, we kind of have to meet their guidelines, meet their time frames. The you know, project will be programmed during a certain year, and we have to be meeting, making sure we're hitting certain milestones so that they keep it on that timeline. So that can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, and then the other piece on MassDOT is that they're going to administer the bidding and the construction. So they'll have personnel, they'll have resident engineers uh, 
uh, on site with students that will be overseeing construction when it does go into construction. So just wanted to go through a couple of those things as part of the, uh, the program itself. Our project goals, which I think uh, Norman hit uh, as part of his presentation, is to improve traffic operations and reduce congestion, improve bicycle and pedestrian accommodation and safety, enhance Main Street, improve and upgrade the public and private utilities. Those are on the handout as well. Pretty lofty goals. The, um, this is kind of an overview of the, of the whole project. Not everything on this list is something that MassDOT is going to be paying for. Some of these will become the responsibility of the town, as well as, you know, as we look to uh, public and private utilities for upgrades to their facilities. So, but, but the overarching of the whole project, these are some of the proposed Im improvements. So realignment of Grove Street, you know, in the center intersection to improve operations and reduce congestion. Originally, that wasn't part of the project, and it was because um, Colella's was still in business. Uh, and it was not something that they, they could, uh, you know, that the town wasn't exploring at that time because the, the, uh, the parking and some of the other elements to the, uh, to the business were, um, you know, were, were real challenges. But once there was a changeover in ownership, MassDOT, the district office in Worcester, contacted VHB in the town and said, hey, we noticed that there's been a change, that the supermarket's closed. I mean, is there any option, any opportunity to, to work with the new property owner and try to acquire some property. Because that intersection causes the majority of the congestion in the downtown. And I'll get into some of the specifics of it, but I just wanted to hit that one point. station at work for you <laughs> Wow we're still live okay so the the mass dot and district uh, office in Worcester contacted the town and said hey this is an opportunity you need to explore this because we can really make some improvements along the corridor with congestion if we're able to uh, acquire some property and do some realignment of the intersection expansion of the town common and green space in the town was also mentioned by Norman you know, some of the data that the, that the town engineer and, and public works director had brought to us from prior discussions with uh, the Historic District Commission was, um, you know, improvements to the common, incorporation of the Doughboy Island into the common and expansion through there would be a good or key, a key component that we could um, improve on the common area. So it's something that we put as part of our goals. We looked at multiple alternatives and came up with an option. Um, in, as part of the preliminary design to expand on the common, bring it out to Main Street. I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But to really incorporate that and, um, uh, you know, it, it, at this time it's a little, you know, it looks kind of just like green space. As part of our final design piece, we'll start talking about landscaping design and streetscape design and, and specifics on trees and other street furniture that can be incorporated in the project. So it's again we say preliminary that kind of piece of the design gets into uh, a little bit more advanced when we're doing some detailed calculations and we start looking at uh, some of those other features adding both on road and separated bike lanes um, that's a key another key point for uh, public funds on a on a roadway project is incorporating all users and i'm going to go through that with all the different users that we're incorporating as part of the project uh, new sidewalks on both sides of Main Street throughout the project limits. So you can walk both sides from Wood Street all the way up through Ash. There are a couple gaps right now that we're going we're gonna to close uh, with new sidewalk and then up through the common area, what we're going to do with the sidewalk up in there. Removal of overhead utilities and undergrounding between Summer Street and Ash Street. This is a piece of the project that the town and VHB are actively pushing and pursuing with the utility companies. It's something that DOT is still kind of doing a wait and see um, approach right now because there's a, a lot of communities over the last, you know, 30 plus years of my career that have come forward with, hey, we want to do this. And then when, when the, the cost comes out, DOT is not paying its private utilities and things kind of can go by the wayside. So it's something we're working on and the town's committed to it and working with those utilities. But DOT's got a little bit of a hands-off approach until we get a little bit more commitment on the private side, private utility side. 
street lighting and street furniture that's part of that uh, landscape design and streetscape that we'll be working on in our final design phase and then adding more off street parking is something it's part of the project but it's something the town's been doing you know it is you know the new lot on uh, up at the police station has added six spots we've proposed some new lot uh, new parking on street on grove street as part of the realignment and the town content and i'm going to go through a few others that they're looking at town continues to push that and dealing you know we've we've met with the chamber of commerce multiple occasions it's stuff that we hear from them all the time and we're continuing to explore and pursue all those areas i'll go over those in a few minutes so one of our you know again going to dot we have to improve traffic operations and efficiency so existing conditions assessment we take we do a traffic study we look at the volumes we take we check the bike accommodation which is part of the the state funding and federal funding pedestrian amenities parking and then we're going to go into some key intersection locations or major intersection locations so first of all part of our traffic volumes there's about 17,000 vehicles a day that are going up and down Main Street all day long our bike combination I'm going to go into that next but we have a combination of on-road separated bike lanes and two-way separated bike lanes and I'm going to go in, into detail on what those each look like <coughs> pedestrian amenities at the key intersection or at the major intersection locations we're going to have ADA ramps with push buttons and countdown timers parking as I said we've already been working with the town and the chamber on adding more parking through the downtown and then those major intersections which are Wood Street, Cedar at Grove, and uh, Hayden Rose Street and Marathon Way. I'm going to go into some specifics on those. Whoop. So bike accommodation. There's generally four ways to accommodate bicycles on the roadway. One is on the road and in the shoulder. One is on the road sharing the lane. Then there's off-road separated. And then there's off-road two-way separated. And it's, it's a mishmash, but there's safety involved. If there's sufficient room, what we can accomplish. And I'm going to hit each one of those right now. So, and some of them are on the plans in the back, but generally, on road and in the shoulder, approach. It's kind of at the project limit. So approaching Wood Street, and then from Hayden Rose Street out through Ash Street. You know, as we're transitioning from the proposed cross section with the separated bike lanes to the, I guess the outer limits of the project we got to meet what's out there existing so it's a safe maneuver so that's the areas approaching Wood Street and approaching Ash Street that will have a five-foot shoulder adjacent to the lane on each side that will be proposing bike accommodations in those areas so that's just on the road within the sh within the shoulder in the stretch from Cedar Street to Hayden Rose Street we have what's called a separated bike lane one on each side so we have your travel lanes in the middle we have a parking lane on each side and then we have a five foot bike lane which is actually elevated from the parking lane on each side so the separated bike lanes one in each one lane in each direction and then the third option is from basically Wood Street to Cedar Street we have a separated two-way bike lane so we'll have the travel lanes in the middle there's a couple left turn lanes in those areas and we'll have a 10 foot bike lane which is going to support only on one side which is going to support two-way bike traffic on one side of the street our pedestrian amenities include um, concrete sidewalks five feet on both sides from wood to ash streets which i already talked about briefly americans with disabilities act ada compliant wheelchair ramps at those major intersections where the signals are being reconstructed we'll have traffic signals with pedestrian uh, with pedestrian signals push buttons with countdown timers grade separated sidewalks adjacent to the bike lanes so we have normally or what you may be used to is a uh, two lanes within the roadway a granite curb or a bituminous curb with a six inch reveal and then the sidewalk the way we've introduced the separated bike lane is that we have a reveal off the roadway then the bike lane and then we have another grade separation of two inches to the sidewalk because we can't mix bikes and peds on the same side or bikes and peds together because of the, the different type of modes and zone I'm going to show some some details of what that's going to look like but I want to just hit that quickly and then um, 
Another piece that's still to be kind of determined, enhanced pedestrian crosswalks uh, to be investigated during the final design. We have options with um, imprinted brick style, cobble style, other things within the crosswalks that we're expecting to incorporate as part of uh, the historic district and then also, but some of the details on that is still in the preliminary stages and uh, those normally would get involved when we start doing some of the streetscape design on the project. There's going to be some parking impacts. Uh, you know, we're going to just rip the Band-Aid off and talk about that. Um, I've counted, or we've counted, all of the parking within the limits of the project by section, north side, south side, eastbound, westbound, and we have some impacts to parking. But what the town has already done is looked at proposing, you know, four more spaces on Grove Street as, as a result of realigning the intersection. Six spaces have been constructed at the police station. Four have been added at Walcott, at Walcott, excuse me, library parking, 20 spaces, and then additional, which is off site, but over at St. John's, about 40 spaces. I'm going to talk a little bit about our major intersections, Wood Street, Cedar Grove, and then Hayden Row Street at Marathon. <clears throat> so right now, Wood Street has kind of one lane approach in each direction on Main Street. And the stop bar is set way back because of the, the traffic gets congested and you can't make your maneuvers there. So one lane approach, it has about on average about five accidents per year based on the study that was done from 2009 to 2013. We're proposing to add a left turn lane from Main Street to Wood Street, a pedestrian crosswalk across Wood Street. Bike lanes will be introduced on both the east and westbound side, and that's also where we begin the two-way bike lane. So as an aerial, here's Wood Street, here's Main Street here. Right now there's one lane that is going straight on Main Street, and people queue up to make a left turn, and they... Um, they impede the flow of traffic. So what we've done is we've done some widening along um, the uh, westbound or the eastbound side, excuse me, to be able to get a left turn lane by itself here and a through lane to be able to go straight across. And on the opposite side, heading westbound, the, the approach that's there now has two lanes, a right turn that turns onto Wood Street or continues on 135. But we've introduced the, the bike lane between the two lanes. So we'll have a through lane Heading westbound, we'll have the right turn that's going on to Wood Street, and then there's the bike lane that's introduced here. And as I mentioned in the prior slide, we called out where the two-way separated bike lane begins, as it begins right at this crosswalk right across from Wood Street. Cedar at Grove. I don't think I need to tell you, other than I can give you some professional terminology that it's a it's a problem intersection right now right so in the terminology of you know important you know high level engineering you know it's an offset intersection with split signal phasing because of the signal or because Grove and Cedar Street are offset so much we can't run the traffic signal at the same time uh, on the north and the southbound side because the traffic would we cross and we'd have accidents so that's layman's terms Right now, it's had over, you know, on average 10 plus, 10.6 accidents per year over that five year study period, which happens to be a high accident location by MassDOT's standards for the district and the statewide average. 10.6 accidents, and I'm, I'm not trying to minimize them, um, 10.6 accidents may not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but when you measure how many vehicles go through the intersection on a daily basis and then you, ha or on a yearly basis, and then you have you know, 10, that factor, they calculate a uh, accident capacity factor and it, 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 it exceeds what else is happening in central mass and, and on the statewide list. So we're proposing to realign the intersection with concurrent phasing. So when we realign Cedar at Grove, we'll be able to run the left turns at the same time um, because we'll be able to move uh, Grove Street over. We're going to have two through lanes westbound, which is going to improve on that congestion that's now extending past the uh, the town town com the common and also the uh, uh, town offices. And then we're going to integrate the bike crossing with the signal there. So this is what we're looking at from a plan view. 
sorry, it's a little small. It just happens to be the, the configuration in the, uh, of the intersection. But um, here's Grove Street, Main Street coming across and Cedar. So where it was before was kind of lined up. So you're going to drive right into the curb here. So we've moved that over. This blue area that's been hatched out is what the area that the town has been uh, working and committed from Cross Point, the uh, new owner of the property, to be able to realign the intersection so we can have operations, you know, be more efficient through there. Hayden Road Street at Marathon Way, we're proposing a flashing beacon for Main Street into Hayden Road Street with a, uh, you know, putting in a left turn lane. I'll show the plan in a moment. Extending and enhancing the town common, again, by uh, incorporating the Doughboy Island into the common area. We're continuing the sidewalk along Main Street through Ash Street, and we're adding additional parking on Main Street. So our plan view, we've, we've introduced this left turn lane in the center of Main Street so you can go into Hayden Row Street. This is a mast arm that'll have a flashing beacon on the top of it, so it'll alert most motorists that there's um, vehicles making the turn there. Here's where Marathon Way was previously, and here's the Doughboy Island. So we're bringing that curb line right out to Main Street, putting the parking on Main Street, and expanding the green space of the common. And then, as I said, by bringing that sidewalk and that curb line out, we're extending the sidewalk. Now when you come up Main Street and you come to Hayden Row Street, sidewalk ends. It's just gone. And this will promote that. We've got the sidewalk. We've got the sidewalk here and then the parking. And we are looking to enhance the monument. And we'll work with the Historic District Commission as part of that streetscape design to kind of incorporate how we can uh, set the monument, uh, give it a, a sense of place, and then how we can integrate sidewalks and walkways to be able to get there and, you know, and enjoy that area. Um, uh, not that it's not, imp it's not important now, it's just the way that's been kind of minimized. Is, is it looks like we can enhance it and make it better for the, uh, for the project. So a couple perspectives on Main Street. So here's Grove Street here. Here's where uh, the, the CVS is and Marty's. And what it looks like, I say today, but let's call it before. It was, uh, you know, over a year ago. We're proposing the sidewalk. will come along and we'll have the crosswalk back here. We have the integrated bike uh, through the signal. We'll be more in the, in the shoulder area. This is where the... Uh, Separated bike lane ends on the opposite side, and then it continues, or the two-way separated ends, continues on the other side. So again, a clearly defined pedestrian crossing, improved bike accommodations, uh, great separated bike lane between the sidewalk, the curbing, and the street, um, and then enhanced uh, with overhead electrical wires. They have been, you know, photoed, photoshopped out of the out of the picture. Just a couple hundred feet up. So here's the Grove Street right in here, here's CVS, so we're looking now eastbound towards Grove Street, the way it looks, I say, today, but a little while ago. Um, the integrated bike lane here, the separation from the roadway, separated zone from the pedestrians, and how we can, um, again, make that safer, separate those two movements. Bird's eye view, or what the landscape architects call the bird's eye view. This is Grove Street the way it lays out now. See the street on the other side. You can see that how the traffic is really going into the curb line here. And um, it's a little bit blurry from, uh, from the photo uh, zone. But by moving that over, we're going to line up Grove Street so you'll be able to go straight across, make these left turns onto Main Street, um, keep the uh, CVS fully operational with the uh, bank ATM, on that location, providing the connection, and then here's the, the enhanced parking places. Not everyone can probably see those, can probably stand in the way, but we've added those parking spaces in for, um, for Grove Street. And then lastly, Marathon Way and the Doughboy Island, how it kind of looks. Bringing out that curb line, um, you know, new grass, sod, and then whatever landscape and streetscape elements we're able to incorporate there, carrying the sidewalk through. You know, we remove the road and expand the park and the common area. The separated bike, in, in, excuse me, separated bike and pedestrian crossings are here. So our project costs and next steps. Overall, project's gonna cost in excess of $8 million. DOT 
and the TIP project is the eight million, and and that's let's say that's essentially the plans that are on boards over against that side of the wall. The things that we talked about, there's some integrated um, landscape and streetscape that have to be looked at. The utility upgrades are pieces that are going to be outside that eight million that have to still be explored. Um, and then at this point, you know, we have some unknowns that because we haven't finished the design plans yet, what some of those uh, project costs might be. Our uh, next steps on schedule. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that the project was submitted back in June. It's under review by DOT. Because of where it sits on the, the TIP process, they get 120 days to review the full package. We're nearing the end of that 120 days. So we've received comments so far from the right-of-way bureau, the environmental group, utility companies, and then recently from the complete streets engineer. We'll have additional review comments we figure through the next couple of weeks. We need to respond to those comments and then have what's called a comment resolution meeting. It's just we sit down with DOT and we clarify what some of their comments are and how we'd like to address them. This is what we'd like to do. And, and again, it's a little bit back and forth. Uh, we're expecting that October, November. We've talked with at least the district office about programming a public hearing toward the end of November. Um, but really, it's based on tonight, input, and then that comment resolution meeting. The final design phase will begin you know, in, uh, in the winter through the uh, fall of next year. And also there's a right-of-way process um, that's a little bit undefined right now. There might be some temporary easements that might be needed. You know, where we build sidewalk adjacent to private property and we build driveways, we may need to go on private property a couple of feet. And we want to make sure that we get a smooth transition from the roadway through the sidewalk onto private property. We don't want to leave any abrupt changes or anything like that. So that's part of the right-of-way process. I don't want to scare anyone, oh, if they're acquiring, they're taking my property. It's really to blend in from the new roadway to the existing private property owners. Um, also as part of right-of-way, as part of any utility relocations, um, there may be needs for aerial easements, for overhead wires you know, on certain parts of the project, or if um, the town is successful in moving forward with the undergrounding, that work is going to have to come from the street to the property, you know, to the property line and then maybe even into the house. So we might need easements for the work to be done like that. So again, I don't want to shy away from the right of way process, but I want to say, you know, it's more to blend in to private property. We don't have any permanent takings. The, the work that we've done over at the CVS with Cross Point and the town, you know, that was a, you know, favorable negotiation on a land swap so that we can make better improvements down there. We're looking to do that as part of the rest of the project as, as needed to uh, incorporate some of those things. Dave Del Torrio's town engineer facilities director. He was sitting, oh, he's sitting up in the back. See, never put yourself between, never put the public between you and the exit door. <laughs> when I worked at the state, that's what they told me. Always have the public, make sure you have an exit strategy. So Dave's been instrumental working with us day by day on the project. Um, his name is also on the handout sheet, so you can try fold that and send it in. Um, his uh, phone and email, um, my phone and email is here, and uh, we'll uh, be able to take questions in, uh, in a few minutes. Look at that. Did I take up too much time? You're doing very well. Well, we're ahead of schedule. It's only, you know, 10 after 7. I should be, you know, we still have another half hour or so. Dave, did you have anything that you wanted to say? No, Dave, he's happy for me to do. <laughs> um, so this phase, or th this part of the, pro um, of the presentation, you know, essentially I'm done with this piece. I can talk about some of the plans that are on the side and that you looked at at the beginning. I'm sure people, as they look at things, um, don't understand this or they have ideas. You know, everyone a, is a um, traffic engineer because we drive every day and say, oh, they should do this. And if you could do that, it'd be better. I can get out better. So I'm sure you have questions about what I just presented, as well as the plans that you saw at the beginning. And um, I'm happy to take those at this point. One thing, the microphone that's to my right up in front here, so that those at home and they're making a uh, transcript or recording the meeting, if you could come up there so that way they can hear at home what your questions are. And uh, if you could just identify yourself, then I will take a question. And if there's none, then you don't have to pay me to stay any longer. Thank you, that was very informative. 
Um, Margie Wick and Cross Street, you actually answered some questions that I had, and I love a lot of what your proposal is, but, but. I had a few things. But, okay. But, there's a yeah. but, or four actually. Um, so, one thing that I know that you probably don't know is that on that turn onto Wood Street, what's happening is parents are dropping their kids off at that preschool. Mm -hmm. So, the traffic flow is very much affected by whether a person is turning to stop and turn into that driveway or, or not. Is, is it on Wood Street or is it on Main Street? It's on Wood. It's on Wood, okay. Right. So when they make the turn, because I've done this every day on my way to work, um, you think everything's fine and then the person in front of you slows way down and they may or may not signal before they want to turn. So that's just something to keep in mind. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Second thing was um, in terms of the two-way bike lane on Grove, are there any studies on the safety of that? Bikes going two ways next to each other? I've never heard of that. Yes, DOT actually released, the MassDOT just released their, um, their separated bike guide. Just, mm, I can't remember the, the, the date when it was released, but uh, I can get you that information. There have been studies because it's separated. It, most important thing on bicycle safety and pedestrian, it's when you integrate the zones, there's conflict just like when we're driving on the roadway. So the separated bike lane is separate from the sidewalk, so we're not mixing that zone and then riding side by side. It's 10 feet wide and it's striped with a, with a double yellow uh, or a single yellow, depending on you know, what, what we're doing with the bikes there. So that hasn't been finalized, but they'll be share the road, you know, share signs and there'll be signage that, that um, guide the bikes, but also the, it, it's the, the bicyclists that are I don't want to say professionals, but the, the really advent, you know, ad, advent bicyclists, they understand it and they, you know, they'll, they'll drive on the roadway. They, they, they're pretty, you know, you can't scare them. But right. there have been studies and DOT released their recent standards on separated bike lanes is, you know, is if, if there's room and you can separate and you can do it safely, then that's a um, the way you want to go. We have been dealing with Upper Charles Trails Committee, not myself personally, mm -hmm. but my staff. And it was um, it was through the Upper Charles Trails Committee, and then um, I can't remember the, the the students that had come into the selectmen and kind of said, "Hey, we we think you ought to look at this if you can incorporate so we can minimize some of the impact." We went through some of their results and studies, got some direction from the board of selectmen, and then dove into it a little bit and said, "Hey, we can make this work if we can do this and do that." And and then DOT, like I said, just fairly uh, you know in the last year has released their new standards and said if you can do it do it so I can share that with the town so that way it'll be on the town's website and that includes the two-way one where yes the two-way okay, the, the, the single one. separated and then the okay. two-way both right. in there um, and then two ideas one is um, can we put a parking garage downtown somewhere I don't know where if you start the first dollar <laughs> and that, okay I'll give you a dollar um, in the back of bills I don't know but that would help mm -hmm. because parking 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 is the worry um, and then the only other thing, and I'm sure this is a yes, but all of that roadway, all in that downtown, that's going to be resurfaced, right? More than resurfaced. Okay, fine. We're going to take up, uh, we've done, the test pits have been done to excavate, um, take samples of what the pavement is and what's underneath so we can reconstruct, take out some of the old material, replace it with better new material. In the areas where the material is not bad underneath, then we're only going to have to take off the couple inches of pavement, and then, but the whole thing will be reconstructed and resurfaced as part of the project. Okay, so then a follow-up question is when, and that will impact traffic seriously. Yes. So Prob you know, we're, we're probably, we're at least 18 months away, probably closer to, Summer. you know, two years away before shovel in the ground because there's a lot of different things you know that have to happen right um, as part of the final design piece we will integrate a staging plan that says this is how we recommend you you know you build this this section they don't generally say oh we're gonna do 500 feet over here so we'll have to come up with an integrated approach on how they're gonna build it and, and reconstruct it there will be some disruption and some impact um, but we're gonna you know we're gonna work with that as part of utility work to try and do some of that widening work, put the underground, um, you know, any water work or any gas work and, and redoing the drainage and do that underground work so we can maintain traffic off those peak times. So we're not doing it seven to nine in the morning, I'm trying to do it from, you know, nine to two, three in the afternoon and, and stuff like that. But we will integrate 
haven't done that completely yet, but we've at least looked at it preliminar preliminarily. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See, it's not that scary up there. She had great questions. She did, I hope mine are as good. I'm Mary Arnott from 51 Trees the Road. Um, just a logist or clarification. On the handout at the bottom of the page, that website that's given, I know that's not the town website uh, address, so is that directly to the project document? If you take a look at it, it says goo.gl. It's, it, it, yeah, it's it, in, it does it's work, in, yeah. and it's something the town presented, but I'm not sure so the specifics of is it the town yeah. or is it a yeah. or a host. Oh, this goes off the main page. Okay. Yes. All right. That was just a simple. Okay. Um, the study was done on the traffic going through the town. Was there also any study done on how much usage the bike lanes would, good, would get versus what it would cost to, to add all those bike lanes in the project? Um, no, a study wasn't done specifically as you just questioned it. As part of any um, publicly funded project in the Commonwealth with federal and state funds, bicycle accommodation must be part of the project. And then there are varying degrees of what we can, you know, what you can do, and that's why I showed the three options of on-road, the separated from the road, and then um, separated two-way. And so we initially, uh, the design initially looked at incorporating the bikes within the roadway, and it, park, it impacts a lot more parking doing it that way. When we looked at the separated, where we could keep the parking on the road and then separate the bike lane and the sidewalk, lessened the impact on parking and then still accommodated bicycles so we met that criteria and then we looked at other options to do the two-way um, based on you know again having sufficient room and not impacting parking so we we looked at a couple different options in you know parking impact the private property and um, accommodating bikes with a kind of like the three factors that we looked at okay so to get state funding we need to have the bike lanes yes okay it's not that I'm against bike lanes no it's a, I just it's a fair really question. concerned about cost it may be to the town versus usage and then also the safety of the cyclist in all of that traffic but that's maybe the speed limit will be addressed I don't know they're talking about maybe making it 25 miles an hour or something through there I don't know um, the other thing I wanted to ask was about the overhead utilities and underground between summer and ash. If the project is wood to ash, why did the underground wiring issue start at summer to ash only? I'm going to defer, uh, either defer to Norman or yeah. Dave. They know, that, they know that particular piece more than I do, or better than I do. Yeah. It, precisely, it was based on public feedback as well as cost of the project. Okay. The town just could not afford. My yeah. memory might may not be as good as I'd like it to be, but I thought at some town annual meeting there was a discussion of underground utilities all along Main Street, primarily through the downtown area, and I thought the town had pretty much said, no, we don't want to incur that cost. It's too expensive for the benefits. Does anybody else remember that? Precisely. Preci okay. yeah, precisely, the requested town meeting was for funding of the project. Mm -hmm. And what we then did after receiving that feedback from town meeting was to scale the project down and, and also source other alternative funding sources. Okay, so yeah. when this project all comes forward for funding, part of it is going to come from the town as I understand it. And that's going to include the underground wiring, which I thought the town had pretty much said we don't. The majority said they didn't want that done. I think so. I was kind of, you know, I thought, well, if you're going to do it, why stop it? And then if you are going to do it, how does that go? That doesn't that go against the town when they said they didn't? The majority said no. So that was my question. Okay. Uh, let's see if I have anything else. I have a lot of questions. I won't take up too much time because others will have some as well. Um, Personally, <laughs> all right, this, I'm not from Phipps, but I use Phipps Insurance, and I park right in front every time I go down and see them, and I like going down to see them. So it looks like they're not going to have any parking in front. Where am I going to park? It's kind of just a... 
there, as I said, there are some impacts to parking. We're introducing new parking on the street where we can and in, in other locations. So, I mean, I'd have to look at it specifically. That location at, at the end of this portion, I'll be able to look at it on the board with you. Okay. I didn't see anywhere that, you know, that there's going to be parking there. I don't like the parking taken away from the businesses. That hurts them. But, and finally, I thought one of the bike lanes that you talked about near the Wood Street intersection. Did I hear something wrong? Because Miriam, uh, we heard that the bike lane was between the two traffic lanes, or did I hear that wrong? No, just just on that traffic signal approach as you're heading westbound, the right turn lane that turns into Wood Street, then the bike lane will be next to that, and then the through lane to go straight because the bike is the bike lane continues straight on Main Street onto West Main Street. Okay, so, so that's, if I'm it is, going, if you're making a right turn, the bike will be in it will be in the center. Ne not in the center on the yellow line, but between the through lane that's going on to West Main Street and the right turn lane that would be turning onto Wood Street. That's the way it's kind of so laid out. So we did hear it correctly. You're going to yes. have a bike lane in the middle of two traffic lanes. Yes. Bikes so are bikes are a legal mode of traffic, uh, legal mode of uh, de you know traffic device on road, and um, so when you have a right turn lane like that, if you have them in the shoulder then they're gonna be in conflict with a right turn vehicle that's going into Wood Street. So you bring, you bring them out um, into the uh, adjacent between the two lanes. Okay, I'm sure you studied and looked at it very closely. It just seemed like that was an accident waiting to happen if someone is going over to make a right hand turn and now they've got to look and make sure there's not a cyclist, which are much harder to see than a big car mm -hmm. coming up alongside you. No, it's a good question. If the the second handout, which had the kind of lines on it and Dave Del Torrio's name, you could put a couple notes on that and hand it to me. I'll be able to check on, and I can also look at. It. I'm just don't want you to stay all night. If you you know, but you could put a couple notes on that and send it to us. But we'll look up the uh, parking down at Phipps so I can be more familiar with that specific area. And then if there's anything else that pops up, you can put it on there and, and send it to us. Okay. Thank okay? you very much. Thank you. I do like listening to you. I can actually hear you. Thank you for that voice. If I can hear you, everybody can hear you. Trust me. I can't hear myself, um, though. Well, that's all right. You said there were two westbound lanes coming down the hill. If the town hall is on my right, you're going to have two westbound lanes just, coming down. Just at the, I have to measure the the distance, but just at um, the intersection at um, Cedar Street, there'll be two lanes that that it, it's because we have to balance impacts to parking, so we we shortened it, but we do carry two lanes along Main Street. Um, as you're approaching the intersection, just in the uh, the queue with the area where you'd have stop vehicles for the traffic signal, we do have that. I'll, I'll measure it for you and show you what that distance is. All right. Well, the reason I'm asking is because I think the chief might back me on this too. The accidents down at the mobile and the shell station is down where there's two through lanes, and everybody's in a hurry. We all are. I'm sorry. But one guy's going along and he decides to let somebody out, and the other guy comes along. You have instant T-bone down there. Yep. The other question is, how are your markings going to be on the road? You have one hash mark in town right now in front of the Next Generation Children's Center, and that's to allow traffic to get out. I don't think people know. I don't know if I teach this in driver road anymore or not. But if you are coming up 85, I'm sorry, 85, and you're going left up East Main Street, heading to the Common, you have the drugstore, you have Walcott Street, and you have the town hall. And I challenge you to come up there at high, high traffic time and try to get in. And I'm sure people have tried to do it at left-hand turn. Nobody leaves side roads open anymore. It's, it's human nature to roll forward a foot every time. Are we going to address that with markings? And I know Mike Sutton said many years ago, I guess he was in Chicago, and he said if you get caught in those markings, it's a $100 fine. You're supposed to leave it open. Are we going to do anything like that to get hash marks in there and re-educate people? It, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of information in that question. Um, Enlighten me. It, well, you're right. I mean, the, uh, the courtesy factor is a... Um, That's out the window. I'm sorry. I, I know, but it, the enforcement factor with the police department, it'll, it'll increase the courtesy factor quickly. Yes, it will. But um, it, it's something that we would expect to work with the public safety officials for improved 
uh, signage and striping through there so we, so we can try to get some gaps in the uh, and, and uh, allow people to be able to get into those businesses town hall etc um, it, it is a challenge uh, with the motoring public not providing sufficient gaps like that but it's something where we're going to continue to work with uh, you know what works best in in Hopkinton is we're trying to introduce it in other towns as well the other and, question uh, I would or I would I'd write down as a suggestion if y'all coming up West Main and you got I call it cookie stop sign because he put it there before you're turning left onto wood to allow the tractor trailers to come around you need a light there something fierce a light there that will turn red before and let the other intersection clear somehow the engineers can do that fantastic I know they can there, there are some progression I, I think I heard you out in the hallway you were talking out in the front area about that mm. in, in timing the signals you know um, traffic signal technology has far surpassed the average motorist ability to understand what's happening and and I'm not a traffic signal design engineer but we put loops in the pavement or we use video cameras we we have clearance intervals so that way people can clear the intersection if you have uh, congestion because you know um, during certain times of the day you do have that stacking of vehicles they haven't fully cleared the intersection we have pulse detectors that will put in the pavement in those areas right, will right. extend the green time we're, we're constantly challenged with those types of um, those types of issues and we're using as, as much of new technology to try and extend those green times to clear the intersection so that way we you know we're not ending up with um, gridlock and someone can't make a left and then it just starts to cycle back so we we put loops in the pavement at the signal we put them as you clear the signal to try and extend that green time we look at the timings to see how we can improve on that efficiency uh, newer stuff that's that's come out over the last couple years is uh, adaptive traffic signals so that it adapts not only you know I mean right now you have a specific timing for signals and I don't want to bore anyone and get into the technical details but there's a certain time for each approach let's just say it's a hundred seconds and then it's split three ways but Main Street takes 75 percent of that time because there's the volume of traffic so then there's only 25 percent of that hundred seconds that gets allotted for Wood Street certain times of the day when we talked about the daycare they may need more than that 25 percent the adaptive signals are reading the the traffic in the pavement from the video cameras from the pulses in the pavement and saying hey we need to extend this and they extend it for you know and they and then they continue to measure are we clearing the cycle are we still ending up with vehicles on the pavement loops they go into that signal controller and it records what's happening and then we go out we look at it we can open up the cabinet and see what the conflicts are and what's happening we and typically add a few more seconds here do this here and and we and we can monitor that stuff you know outside of opening the cabinet yeah. so we're continuing to look at those things excellent points it, there are things that we're looking at I think we can work with the public safety officials and some of the questions up at the town hall at Wood Street it's going to be a bit of a challenge because there are some different factors there same thing when we get down to Cedar Grove is that you know adaptive signals so we can you know some days it might need more because we got a, you know we had an, an accident or we had a car broken down and then it starts this this ripple being able to read that stuff interpret it add a couple seconds to clear the queue is what we're trying to do and and uh, using that technology as best we can very good thank you thank you To it, you see. <laughs> uh, Stephen Campbell, 8 Park Street. Uh, great presentation. I've learned a ton of stuff tonight. So, uh, and I, like Margie said, I like most of what I've seen. Uh, so, good work. Uh, it's a lot of trade offs uh, that it's, you guys are making. It's a balance. It yeah. really is a balance. Every little piece, you, know, you impact parking, you accommodate bikes, and then you have a daycare with drop offs. You, right you got to try and get a couple seconds everywhere to try and make it work. right so. and I see these goals and I, uh, as as I see it the number one goal is to improve traffic operations and reduce traffic operations and safety and reduce congestion yes and, and and safety comes along with that so so I'm somewhat concerned that we're going to get more traffic congestion by grassing off uh, Marathon Way 
I like the additional sidewalk idea that we would get there. Mm -hmm. I like the, you know, bringing in the dough boy so people can walk over safely. Um, I'm concerned that cars who, who are going east and want to go down A Street, and there's a lot of cars use A Street as a throughway to Holliston and, and, and that yeah. part of, uh, that they're going to slow down traffic on Main Street. So, so has there been any studies done of that traffic flow down A Street and the impact that a, a somewhat sharp right turn is going to have on that traffic and the flows that are going to result because probably they're then going to go down Hayden Row and then zoom down Park Street. Uh, and has there been studies done on we, that? We have looked at a s several different uh, alternatives for the area between Hayden Row Street and Ash Street. One, you know, couple retaining Marathon Way and then others and seeing what some of the benefits to each one. And, and we really got kind of like overwhelming support from a couple of different factions that extending that out was going to be better for the common, for the cultural resources in the community. And um, I, I'd have to relook at the turning movements on, on that location to say, take what's coming that's been presently using Marathon Way and, and bring them on Main Street to make the turn at Ash. We, we might need to soften that a little bit. We're hoping that the addition of the common to incorporate the, the Doughboy Island will give us a little room to take maybe a little curse out of that. It's still going to be a, a, you know, a little bit more difficult right turn right. than it is now, but can we do a balance there? And, um, but the numbers that my recollection, it, it wasn't going to be overwhelming and, um, and be hurtful to the operations up there. But, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do, and we're going to have to, you know, at least take a look oh, at those numbers. Yeah, the traffic will flow. Right I mean, now, again, night, uh, we've had more support it. on the, in, you know, really increasing the common area. And you know um, that that could be a real benefit, yeah. at, at least at this point. So it'll it's going to continue to evolve because we'll have meetings with the uh, historic district commission and with the cultural resource side um, to uh, you know to, to kind of make some of those decisions. Yeah, I'd love to see some of those traffic numbers uh, yep, and I'll, the flows. We'll, we'll certainly look at those. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good comments. Hi, Ed Harrow, Eight Spring Lane. Um, I got two hot buttons. One is. My family, my parents met on bicycles. I have a picture of my great aunt Lottie and Uncle Will on a tandem tricycle, and I was hot on my bike just before I came here. I didn't even have a chance to take my shirt off because it was all sweaty. These bike lane things, I don't. There's not an option there that makes any sense to me. A bicycle is a vehicle that belongs on the street. It belongs to follow the rules of the road, and and and, and is appropriate that it's accommodated that way. Having a bike lane between parked cars and people walking, at least when you're on the street in traffic, if someone's going to open their car door into you, they might look behind them to see if there's a car coming. The person on the passenger side is going to pop the door open, and the poor person on the bicycle is going to eat it. The idea of a two-lane bike path is even more outrageous, in my humble opinion. Again, I would much rather have bikes on the road proper with real smooth pavement, because some of you will know that last year I found a pothole while I was waving thank you to a polite motorist. <laughs> Two cerebral hematomas, broke my right clavicle, yada, 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 okay? But I'm still riding my bike. And the second thing, and I've written a letter, and to the best of my recollection, I haven't gotten an answer to the letter, I need to understand the 85 aspect of this intersection. How many lanes are going to be coming up the hill? Com coming up the hill up uh, East Main Street? No, Castle? on 85. Cedar. Cedar, Street. Cedar Street. Oh, I can look at the plants that are probably quicker than that, but I can't take the microphone. <laughs>
Question about Grove Street and Cedar Street intersection. We can't run the traffic signal currently, con concurrently because of the offset. So when we line that up, we're going to run left turns together, and then they'll run the through, through lane and or right turn lane on each one. So the efficiency of the signal is much greater with the operations, you know, being able to run the two side streets at the same time. So because we only have so, you know, you only have so much time. I, I explained briefly, you know, if you have only so many seconds for the entire signal and it goes by, you know, different mm -hmm. movements, yeah, yeah, yeah. same thing. But now we're going to, you know, where we used to run Grove Street first, lefts, throughs, and everybody else was stopped. Then we ran Cedar, left throughs, and everyone else was stopped. And then we did. Uh, Main Street and the left turns and then the throughs. Now we're going to be able to run Cedar and Grove together. So they're going to run a portion of that, <coughs> excuse me, they're going to run a portion of the overall signal will be able to run together. So it's much more efficient. The movements are, you know, facilitated. We've looked at all the turning movements to allow that and then Main Street will run at the same time. Left turns will be advanced phases. So the efficiency of that is, is, um, I, I can't use a percentage, but it's uh, marginally great, greatly improved over running one, running the second, running the left turn, running the left turn, then running Main Street. So it's, it's better than now, but it's not great because you can't have lefts and lefts and rights and rights and straights and straights at the same time. We're going to run lefts and lefts. Yeah, you can do Cedar that. And Grove, right? Yep. And then we're going to run throughs and rights on each side street at the same time. So coming. then we're going to do lefts on Main Street. Okay, okay. okay. It, it, no, no, I'm just, it, it's, no, no, it, it is going to be better than it is. It's going to be better than it is now. The equipment is going to be improved. We, you know, we, we talked a little bit on other locations is having, um, a, you know, the, the loop detectors in the pavement so that it's sensing how, where the traffic is and then adjusting based on the volumes that are, that are going through the intersection. There are tweaks. The technology and the equipment is, uh, you know, is one of the, you know, key additives to the project is that we have a lot more ability to control things with newer equipment and newer technology. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Robert Falcioni. I have a business downtown. I've had one downtown for 25 years. So I, I know a bit about the uh, traffic and so forth. Um, I had submitted my own uh, overhead plan many years ago uh, when I saw what the town came out with. And whatever happened to that lane? <laughs> well, they didn't. They didn't accept my plan as as uh, as they do yours. But I'm looking at the current plan and seeing that uh, the right lane going south on uh, Cedar Street approaching the intersection it doesn't split into two until you're halfway past or halfway into the subway. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking, and I did see a, a plan after I suggested that you start that lane on the other side of the post office, uh, start to split that out because you can fit a lot of cars in there uh, that would ordinarily be down the hill. I just don't know if it's feasible. Um, the si there's a sidewalk there. Someone said today, well, what about the sidewalk? We don't want to hit the <coughs> sidewalk. Well, it should be removed because there's, a, uh, there's no reason for that sidewalk to be so large. It's about twice the width of uh, a normal sidewalk. And so my suggestion is to remove the sidewalk, start that second lane, that right turn lane, or however you're going to use it, ahead of time so that you uh, get the traffic that ordinarily is backed up and you stop that bottleneck because the way it is now, let me reverse, let me go back just for a moment. It used to be a dirt shoulder in front of the post office. And years ago, before they built the post office, the new post office, it was much easier uh, to get through that intersection and quicker because 
people will use that dirt shoulder to uh, break free and move up to the right hand turn. So I'm just thinking it would be um, be helpful to begin that uh, transition from one lane to two lanes on the uh, on the on the northern driveway of the post office. And I'm wondering why that wasn't done. We haven't designed the traffic signal to the to the final phase. Um, at this stage of the project, we, we we've done traffic study. We've laid out you know options and we we've done again kind of a preliminary look at it but we're, we're going to get into the the actual signal timings and cues a little bit more um, as part of that next phase and, and make sure that everything's working but you know I think what I started with the, my, my entire presentation is that there's a balance and a give and take and um, if we can extend that lane a little further and not impact you know, bike accommodation or pedestrian activity or, you know, combinations in there, then, then we'll try to do that to get the efficiency that we can. Is there a bike in, lane there? Are you telling me there's a bike lane at that intersection? Uh, a it, going down think, just, Cedar? I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm looking kind of esoterically is that we look at all of those well, pieces. You know, if I may, and, I, and I'm sorry. No, I, you, right. I know you're spending a lot of time on process, talking about process. I'm talking about this intersection in particular and the fact that uh, I was told you can't do it. Because it's out of the scope. Is that true? I'd have to. I'd have to look at it for you. Because I'm not. I mean, if the town told you it's out of the scope, then then it's probably outside my overall limits. So I'll work with DOT on it. But um, I mean, we haven't finalized every little detail on the signal timings to say, you know, I may, you know, we may run those numbers and say we really need another 35 feet to be able to, as you said, if the left turn lane has six vehicles in it. It shuts off the right turn lane, so you have 150 feet of just clear lane because you can't get there. Right. So exactly. um, we, we look at, geez, if I can just get by this pinch point, I can get traffic into that lane, and, and those pieces will be done in, in the next phase of design. And then just, I hate to point it out, but uh, if you uh, run a ruler from Cedar to Grove, the intersection isn't really straight. It's not straight yeah it's like it still takes it a, it has it still has a little bit of a little bit of a jog to it you say well I mean the uh, property owner for for the CVS gave up a portion and we needed to maintain their um, their operations with the bank ATM and the circulation through that stretch so you know we did the best we could with the available real estate that uh, you know that could work there uh-huh and what if you actually paid for the, for the, some of the property, would that be better? I mean, that that's something that the, the town is responsible. I I don't I don't cut any checks. <laughs> and I think that if, if I may, the last question is uh, about the funding. Who did you say is paying for the eight million? The eight million is a combination of state and federal funds. And the uh, undergrounding of the utilities is is uh, separate from that. It's separate from that. Yes. Okay. And you're going to make sure you get that money. I mean, does, don't we have to get that money first before you uh, stamp the before we project? get the, be, before we get the eight million? The, well, again, there's there's pieces to it. There's a process along the way, and and um, that's that's part of that final phase of the design. And would that be uh, like I say? Would when you say it's part of the final phase, so you hold off the the putting down of this beautiful new service. I'm sure it will be beautiful and new. They're putting them in all over. And then speeds increase. And, uh, well, not if you, not if you uh, affect the uh, No, the, typically when new pavement goes street. down, we, we get a lot of complaints that speeds increase with the new pavement. But, well, you but um, yeah, the, t you know, the, the, the undergrounding portion of the project does need to move forward and, and have some commitments along the way before the, uh, the over pro overall project is done. Or before the payments be put yes, in? Yes, yeah, before the project goes out to bid or before uh -huh. the construction is completed, yes, that piece has oh, to I be hope done. I, I hope I'm still here. <laughs> I hope you're still here, too. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Would you be offended if I said I hope I wasn't still here? <laughs> you're doing a great job. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Muriel Kramer, 39 North Street. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have um, a couple questions. Um, you mentioned the ADA improvements at the major intersections. I assume that's the Grove and and Cedar and the ADA 
wheelchair ramps will be part of the the whole corridor where we have okay. crossings okay. but push buttons are at the major traffic signalized locations okay and that's, that's two the two yes those two locations okay um, I haven't heard anything about Pleasant Street and I can only imagine it's because that particular nightmare we're just giving up to God <laughs> no I didn't hear a question there, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I'd like to know what we're, we, we can't talk about that quarter and not talk about that nasty business at Pleasant Street. I'm it's, sorry, could you elaborate what you mean so, by, it's I mean, so you're, you're, I, could make, I could make up all kinds of things. So, I'm so you've, you've studied something. it, you've been there, you've, you've seen, so that, that intersection, um, particularly at school hours, but at any time, uh, coming out, exiting onto Main Street is hazardous. So I'm just wondering if there's any thought to making some improvements, particularly where Pleasant Street enters Main Street. Main Street. There, there's not a traffic signal proposed at that location at this time. I don't believe, I have to check my, my records, I don't believe that it triggered um, or met the warrants for signalization, but I, I'll double check that in the traffic study. Um, and I'll get that information to the town so that way um, they, can, they can get back to you or as I said, fill out just one of those totally papers well. so we can get back to you. Um, but I, have, I don't have that, that off the top of my head that, that met those, the traffic signal warrants that are, uh, that are required for us to signalize there. So when we, we designed this, we didn't do a traffic study yet? No, no, we did a traffic study. I just okay. said I don't have the figure off the okay. top of my head. Um, I have um, a, a specific question about the, um, specifically the net loss of parking spaces. You, you have mentioned that there, there's a trade-off there and we understand that. Um, can, you, can you tell us where the parking spaces are going to be lost and how many we're losing on street parking spaces? And I remember that you said four added on Grove. We have, I, I have them marked on the plans, and if I go over there, then I lose the microphone. So I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But overall, and town may not be happy with the, the way I'm gonna frame this answer, but I'm gonna give you the, the technical piece of it. There's 98 parking spaces within the project limits, essentially on Main Street. Those have been counted where there's striped spaces today. I may not, agree with all 98 of those spaces because they violate some state law that says you can't park within 25 feet of an intersection and so there's a handful of those spaces that I say it's really not 98 but we're using that number because that's the number that was counted that's what's striped on the corridor right now we're proposing 82 total along Main Street and then the four on um, Grove Street and the six that have been added at the police station so that's 82, so we have a loss approximately of 16 overall, and I have them each marked where we're okay. <clears throat> by specific location. Um, but we are, the town continues to add spaces, at, they did on Walcott, did at the library, and, um, and then at, the, uh, at St. John's, which is off-site from there, not right on Main Street. So, and they're continuing to pursue, I would defer to them on other, <clears throat> excuse me, other areas that they're looking at, that we're trying to incorporate as part of this. It, and that's, that's being done almost independent of the Main Street project. And I, and I, I shouldn't say independent, but being done separately because the town knows it's important and has been adding pieces, adding parking spaces, proposing new spaces as, as we go through the card as we have impacts. Um, so th there's, a, there's currently a little bit of a loss. We are continuing to work with the chamber and try to add spaces back in uh, where it's safe. Uh, there's a couple that look like they were taken out up on Main Street where Marathon Way would be eliminated and brought and the common would be brought out that can be added back in um, because obviously we have the start line for the marathon and you know our traffic engineers didn't put parking just around the stop line but it's it's one day a year so I would think that it could be legal spaces and then it needs to be coned off certain you know certain times of the year so I think there's like four or five more spaces that could be added up there but I need to look at it a little more closely. So as I said, we're kind of back and forth on a few things. We're, the town is extremely focused on the parking and we're looking, every time we open the plans, we, can we add, can we do this, can we do this? And, and they're exploring that and we're, and, we're, and we're looking to do that before the project even, even goes out. That's why they've done what they've done so far. 
I appreciate that and I appreciate the challenge and I think that we all appreciate that some of those parking spaces are uniquely important to individual businesses and in yeah I may call them not legal but I know they're important I don't want to I didn't want to insult anyone with my comment I'm just saying that yeah, yeah. you know if 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 88 coordinator for the state came out and started doing this they might eliminate six spaces without even don't uh, call them but call but I understand what you no no I'm not inviting anybody out but I'm just, I'm just saying that there's a couple spaces that we're counting because they're striped and they're important to some of those businesses but you know I'm trying to do the best I can to add in as many as I can and as I said the town has and the chamber have been dead on focused on that item and pursuing it um, independent of of this project you know so we can get them incorporated now and get some benefit from them so I appreciate that I didn't realize that they were marked so I will double check that one before okay. I leave the only other question I have it's not probably not for you it's more for the town um, I know that we just uh, were spending a, a you know a substantial amount of money on Hayden Row for traffic calming and how are we as a town thinking about um, that project as it feeds into this this project Oh, yeah. She, she, yeah. I have to defer to you, Norman. She looked right at you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, 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 in fact, the, the traffic studies that we conducted uh, for the downtown corridor project uh, in, included analyzing the traffic information uh, from all the side of feeder roads uh, connecting with Main Street. Uh, and I believe the data from Hayden Row was incorporated. We have also asked the, the engineers to make sure that they share information. Um, the engineers who are working on the Hayden Road to share information with our consultants on this project, as well as other engineers who are working on other projects in the vicinity. And I also wanted to address the Pleasant Street question. Yes. Directly, we did study the, the impact and the opportunities that may be presented in relation to that intersection we can share that information with you. And also throughout the, the various public meetings that we have held, that question has come up. So I, thank you. I, I yeah. imagine that it has. Yeah. Um, I actually really, and I have, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I really like um, the idea that uh, Mr. Regan mentioned earlier, the, the you know, hashtagging on the roadways in some important spots where, um, where it is problematic often at particular times um, to and you know to try and enforce that a little bit so that there's a little bit more ability to move uh, in this um, from the side streets thank you so much yes thank you for your comments yeah. <clears throat> Mary Jo Lafreniere 18 Walcott Valley Drive I just have a couple of questions and one is have we negotiated with St. John's for their 40 parking spaces because I was told they had an insurance problem with public parking and weren't going to allow it in their parking lot. We have a signed agreement with St. John's. Good. Okay. Great. Uh, and the other thing is with the um, putting the utilities underground that's a separate item from the eight million dollar project now I know I spoke on it at town meeting about four years ago and it was it was from Ash Street to Wood Street so it's a little shorter but that project in itself four years ago was going to cost eight million dollars do we have any idea what this one is going to cost just from from Ash Street to Summer Street yes um I'll let Dave give out the number. In terms of process, <laughs> yeah. In, in, in terms of process, I, I can share with you that we now have much more detailed plans uh, for the undergrounding. We also have received um, credible estimates from some of the utility companies, and therefore the information we have now is much more precise than what we had four years ago. Okay, thank you. Ms. Joe, Dave. <laughs> Yeah. Currently, the estimate for the undergrounding, um, which includes uh, street lighting, which which we're still looking at and going to get input from uh, the public, um, is in the five million dollars. Uh, five, five, five million dollars. I mean, it it you know I I didn't I said it was separate from the eight million, which it is, but there are pieces obviously that have to be incorporated in in this project because of the undergrounding we're not going to dig up the street twice 
um, but it's it's just on a let's call it a parallel path, and you know we're working with with uh, Dave Del Torrio and uh, and the utility companies on getting more more uh, refined estimates and specifics on that piece. It's just it hasn't got as far it, you know it hasn't got as far as the plant set that's here today. But we are con continuing to to push that and get numbers from them. And um, you know we have Verizon, Comcast, EverSource. Uh, in pieces that are, that are doing designs themselves and we're taking the pieces and kind of molding them make sure they all work and and we don't have everything we need yet so but it is something the town is uh, is pursuing on a parallel path with with Main Street my name is Jackie Potenzoni I live at 12 Wood Street um, I've been a very vocal opponent of the previous plan and I first want to thank Norman Elaine John and Dave that came out to meet me before I came here tonight because I my entrance into this meeting would have been much different um, my question my first question is this residents that are trying to get more of these forms if we could have more made before the end of the night that people can take home with them before we leave my next question is on development Hopkinton has an awful lot of development in the works there's a plan to connect Wayland Road and Chamberlain Street that's going to exhaust out to West Main Street. So we're spending all this money for improvements to, to add that left-hand turn lane and alleviate traffic on West Main Street. But if that plan comes to fruition, you're going to add basically Pleasant Street that's going to exhaust out. And I don't know the exact footage from where that stop is on West Main Street to Wayland Road. Has any forethought been put into how is that going to affect traffic in the future? Because we can spend $8 million now, and if you connect that roadway, we're at that intersection going to be in the same trouble in five years, having traffic exhausting out that's going to want to take a left and take a right on West Main Street to go up to the center of town. Has that been addressed, and has DOT done any traffic studies on how many cars could use that as a cut through across 85 to West Main Street? And how will that affect the intersection there? Because I we, can't. Let me let me just answer that question, and then I'll I'll, I'll take a follow up. But okay. we, we we recently provided information from the town on some of that data. We're in the process of you know distilling it a little bit, and we need to come back to them with you know how is this going to affect, and what can it do here and there. Uh, it is something we're aware of. The town is you know is we're looking at it. It's just we haven't completed that effort. Uh, as of today's date, but we're, uh, we're, we're on it. All right, and my next question is coming down from Main Street, taking the right onto Wood Street, you're adding another lane. Now, you're, I know you're getting rid of the island there and you're, you're gonna have a designated right turn lane and a designated straight lane to go to West Main Street. So when you take that right hand turn, right now there's that box for the daycare to get out. Mm -hmm. People do abide by that box. It's that shaded area in the road. And the gentleman that brought up the point for the boxes at Walcott Street and other areas that the shading in the road does make people stop. And will that still be there to allow tr cars to exhaust out of Missouri Street for daycare traffic to get out and go around the corner? Here's Missouri Street and here's that box right. being replaced. You can see, you know, it's on the plans on the side there as well. Underneath is a, a gray shaded box because that's the existing, and the new proposed white is is still being is being introduced there to allow Missouri Street to stay open, also people will know to not to not block it there. It's a little bit more, <coughs> excuse me, it's a little more difficult at at driveways, you know, up at the town hall and some of those other businesses there to be able to incorporate something like that. It's not. You know, but it is something we're looking at, and as I said, we're going to work with the public safety officials on the best way to introduce some uh, some uh, options to uh, keep some of that stuff clear so people can negotiate to go into those businesses. And currently, when you take that right onto Wood Street, that's constantly a, a green arrow unless Yeah, it has a green overlap. Right, yeah. it has a green constant. Arrow, yeah. Yes. The problem is, when you are trying to cross at that intersection, when you hit the light to cross, cross as, as a vehicle or as, as a pedestrian? pedestrian. No, okay. I'm talking as a pedestrian currently, right here. Because when you hit the pedestrian Push light button, yep. to cross the street onto the other side of Main Street, 
because people so, are so accustomed to taking that right and not stopping, you really have to be careful because people coming down from Main Street don't always stop. Are you gonna have the lights that flash when a pedestrian's crossing in the crosswalk like you have at the library now? And, Typ and Typically we don't introduce flashing at a traffic signalized location like this, but it's, it's something we'll look at is, you know, visibility is an important factor. You know, assuming that the arrow, because it's always green, is always green, is is People a problem. Don't stop. No, I, I understand yeah. that. I mean, I I, I don't want to say something that that's insulting, but I mean, someone needs to, you know, some other visible or optical, audible, might be needed at that location. We do we do countdown timers, but we also do audible. Um, for pedestrians, so that there's, you know, no, I'm talking stuff. for cars. No, I know, but it's, it, but it's the, it, but that, the audible can be, you know, right. winter windows are closed, heat and radio is going. It may not, but some other options to try and address that is something we'll incorporate. But I mean, uh, it, we're challenged a little with some of that stuff. Right. Will that area be wider to cross? Is is the actual street going to be wider now? Is Main Street going to be wider? You're asking? Main Street, when yes, you're at right the here. corner with the daycare. Yes. Well, so this is the daycare here? Right. I live so, next door to that daycare. So this is a little bit wider on this side because we're bringing this lane through. So the crossing is a little bit longer here right now, or proposed to be a little bit longer. All right. And I am i can't remember my last question. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's anymore. okay. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bernadette Markey. I live on 39 Ash Street. I have to say that I appreciate everyone. I appreciate you coming here because this is like a long time coming. I'm glad to finally see things. I mean, we're chugging along, we're getting somewhere, and I know that we still have to iron out details and logistics and everything, but I'm, I'm just excited to finally see things maybe starting to happen sooner than later. So. With that being said, thank you. Um, my question to you is about the crosswalk at the Korean Presbyterian Church. It's a very, it's a very wide part of the road. So if yep. you can maybe get onto that slide again. So isn't it is it across from the common here? Mm -hmm. That the it's, crosswalk. It's right to the left. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. So here's yeah. Hayden Row Street. You had is another it? slide before that was a little bit better, but. Oh, uh, might be. Um, the, are you sure, it's not the plank or the other. The other well, slide goes this, all the, the way. The one to with the common. You know, you can do the bird's eye. That was actually the best oh, one. If you okay. can do that. Sorry. All right. Just, okay. Yes, that's. So great. is it? Is it this? This is. Walk? I guess this is the no, after, no, no, but the before. We need the before. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. You need the before. before. So okay, great. So I see that happening. See, I got here a little bit before seven, so I didn't really. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention, but anyway. So right now, it's it's a very wide row, but it looks in the after plan of the bird, you know. You're gonna, make, you're gonna make me go back and forth again. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that would be great, actually. Oh, good, so it looks a little bit more narrow, because currently, you know, you can't necessarily, I mean, if I live on Ash Street, like I said, so when I'm driving east toward Ash Street, I can't see when there's a lot of traffic anyway and there's cars parked, I can't see the pedestrian on the left side of the road until after I cross that crosswalk. And I feel like a Can I just, I feel just like to clarify, hill. this is the crosswalk Yes, here, that's right? a crosswalk. Okay, so what I, just, just to be clear, yes. we're putting in a flashing, Great. L flashing light at this location at Hayden Rose Street Good. for the, the traffic that's gonna be making this left turn, but there's all, just, just so we, Race no, no, awareness. no, that's, that's okay. wonderful because something needs to be done. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm excited to see that there's some safety and traffic calming going on with these plans. Whatever they turn out to be, whatever we iron out, it's great. But I'm, I'm happy to see that we're addressing that. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, I remembered my question. It's actually on this area at the common. Previously, there was discussion about making Marathon Way a one-way. 
when we were doing the previous plan. Mm -hmm. Has any thought been put into making Marathon Way parking for downtown, additional parking, making it a one way or making it a designated parking area for downtown? We're gonna have the new library. We have a lot more going on downtown instead we, we of grassing looked, it we in. Looked at, well, we looked at four or five different alternatives at this location and the, the expansion of the common and, move, and you know moving out towards Main Street was the preferred from an, uh, an overwhelming uh, from the chamber and from the board and, and others. But you know, and that's that's what we that's what was decided to pursue at this point is to go with this option with the expanded common and uh, moving Main Street, including the the uh, sidewalk along Main Street up through Ash because there was no sidewalk there. So that that's the option that's been pursued to, to move forward. All right, thank you. Sure. Diane McConley, 52 West Elm Street in Hopkinton. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for your information. It's been very helpful, and thank you for allowing us to present all our questions. Uh, I live west of 495, and so my experience with traffic is coming in from that area into town, which during rush hour can take 15 to 20 minutes at times. I'm wondering if you can comment on what the timing goal will be once all these improvements are in place. When you say, I'm just sorry, the timing as in when as in, this might all get built or the timing of? How fast can I get through town? <laughs> 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 I hope it's not going to be 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, we, I haven't done those calculations yet to look at the progression, but we will look at the traffic signal at Wood Street, the traffic signal at Cedar and Grove, and we'll, you know, we do calculate the distance, the, you know, where the greens are, the signals will communicate through GPS, and I'll be able to identify, you know, there's a lot of side streets, but in mm -hmm. the perfect world, how long you'd be able to go through that, I don't, ha we haven't done those calculations yet. Mm -hmm. But there'll, there'll be progression, those signals will communicate, but because there's a lot of side streets in between there, you know, someone pulls out and it, you don't get that progression as, as well as you would if it was, you know, 10 o'clock at night, no one's coming out of the side streets and you could just do the speed limit and geez, it takes only, 37 seconds to go from this end to that end. So mm -hmm. I don't know what that is right off the, at this time. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, it's it's going to be better than that section, you know, you come from uh, west of 495. That's kind of tough. It's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I ugly. live in Grafton, so I take it every now and then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the other, uh, there was someone else who talked about, you know, Pleasant Street and that anticipated growth coming out to Main Street. I'm wondering what amount of future growth for the town has been incorporated into this plan. So what's the, the in thinking about the plan, what's kind of its life in terms of town growth or projected growth for the town with legacy funds generally, building Generally up? we do a 10 year traffic projection mm -hmm. on traffic signals because of the equipment in 10 years, it's kind of like your home computer. It's like in a couple of years, you're like, geez, I could get a new one, could make it faster. So traffic signals, we do traffic projections for 10 years to design the signals. For a car to Lake Main Street, we generally do 20 years. Mm -hmm. We do have all the background growth of projects that have been approved, mm -hmm. that are going to, that have gone through the state for permitting mm -hmm. and, um, and stuff like that. So we do have some, you know, 1% annual growth over a 10 year period, et cetera. So there's, there is a factor of growth in here that's going to take us between 10 and 20 years. And will the anticipated traffic improvements be a constant throughout that period? So is the... I'm is not sure I understand the question. If well, you could it, with the technology that's being uh, incorporated into the town, if you look out for that time period, will it be able to accommodate the growth? So say oh, I can get to town in five minutes over that 10-year yeah. period, it, will again, that it's, stay we, the same? We designed the signals for about a 10-year projection because okay. Patterns change, developments come on side streets, and then things change, something closes, something opens, and there's a different demand. And then the, the equipment can be adjusted because we'll, we'll have right, the highest technology, mm -hmm. pavement loops, and then, um, and then you know, maybe in that 20 year window we have automated vehicles and then we, I don't even need to worry about this stuff. We'll just time everything into the signal. Oh, there you go. Um, question about rerouting traffic. Uh, there are a tremendous amount of traffic uh, trailers that go through town and I'm wondering if there's any way they can be rerouted through a different path so that we don't get that 
tremendous influx because it's great to have all these improvements and make the town a walking town. But having walked around town myself when the tractor trailers keep thundering through, it's really not very pleasant. Unfortunately, with the town accepting state and federal funds to rebuild the roadway, um, larger vehicles, tractor trailers and the like pay those same property, excuse me, pay those same fuel and excise taxes and can be on a public roadway. So when the state and the feds, you know, the town accepts that money, restricting the traffic is not something that's going to be allowed. And last question, you talked about the streetscaping and many other things, you know, being an additional cost. Is that something that will go through DOT or is that a cost that the town will be incurring? It, it'll, it'll go through DOT and the only reason I say it's additional cost is because at this point we don't have any specifics on some of those items. Mm -hmm. DOT does fund the streetscaping, you know, and I, I want to say within reason type mm -hmm. of thing so that because there's a balance between the other 350 towns in the Commonwealth, cities and towns in the Commonwealth. Um, so the streetscaping to some degree can be funded by state and federal funds. Um, street lighting and you know some of those amenities are generally the responsibility of the community because it's owned, maintained, and, um, uh, and stuff like that by the community. Street furniture, whether we put bike racks because of the, the extensive bike network that we're connecting to and then with Upper Charles trying, you know, looking at their extension of their trails, bike racks, street furniture such as, um, you know, benches and things like that, bollards at certain locations, those things can generally be covered in the, uh, in the state and federal funding process. It's just we haven't got to that stage yet. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Gary Trackman. I live at 12 Hartwood Way. I'm a relatively new resident of town. I've been here about 18 months, so I've not endured all the pain and suffering that many of you have. Uh, but I do have a few observations. First, I want to thank you for this very good presentation. I uh, appreciate all the efforts that you've put into this. Uh, referring to this image right here, my observation is that when I'm coming north on Hayden Row, wanting to make a right onto East Main, uh, that um, I respect the pedestrian crosswalk, but that hampers my ability to see traffic coming eastbound because of parked cars uh, at near the corner. Um, it occurred to me that with, with the new proposal that you might be able to move that crosswalk or angle it closer to where I think your bike lane is going to be, and that would allow drivers to proceed a little bit further closer to East Main and possibly get better visibility. So just a, something to think about. It, it's, something we'll, it's something we'll look at a little more closely. I mean, the big thing is ADA compliant um, ramps at that location and the path of travel, it kind of dictates where some of that stuff is. And, uh, but there are options that we can look at to try and slide a little and, and, and stuff like that. Good, good observation. Thank yeah, you. I, I thought I saw the, the, walk, the new walkway, which will be along East Main, if, when you bump out the, the common, um, would give you the opportunity to- Yeah, we might be able to bring it out a little that. further. You're right. Thank you. OK, that's the first one. A uh, second one, regarding uh, the intersection of Main with Cedar and Grove, if you could uh, just slide back to that image which shows the, the north image, the plan, the overhead, the uh, the uh, simulation, okay, uh, the rendering. Uh, let's put it that way. Yeah, just here. It's, yeah, am I seeing three northbound lanes or two? You're seeing three northbound on three northbound lane. No, you have one lane coming in Grove Street and two heading out to uh, okay. two heading toward the intersection. Okay. Uh, and so there's there's additional parking spaces, there's, I guess. There's some parking right here. Yes, there's some which parking. are not which are not there now. Right, is there's not there now. Okay. Had you thought about the relative value of those parking spaces um, versus using that space for a right turn only? We can't accommodate all modes of traffic in an additional lane here to make that right turn. Any vehicle over uh, a UPS truck can't make that without encroaching, no, no taking out, the, so we couldn't use it as an o, as a overall lane for that reason. It would only be able to be used by uh, passenger vehicles and, um, 
and then it, you know it, it the, although it's one of those geez I can s kind of skirt by and make this turn mm -hmm. it's uh, you know the, the private property and then the mass time on the corner anything larger is going to either take that out or encroach on the other lane so it was you know parking was an, an additive but there was there was little value in uh, uh, impact with uh, adding that lane through there okay thanks very much Appreciate thank you it. Hi, thanks. Barry Rosenblum, 10 Briarcliff Drive. Just a couple of quick questions. What's the, the plans for the undergrounding of the utilities are going to have to come up in this town meeting probably for a vote of the funding uh, for the timeline? Correct. So if we need $7 million and you're right in the timeline and the town doesn't approve it, what's the impact to the lanes? Can you, does the plan still work with the telephone utility poles? The yes. way you've designed it, or yes. does it the, throw the, the whole the thing project, off? The project has been, I don't want to say been designed kind of both ways, but it's, it's been designed with overhead wires can be accommodated. We've had meetings with the Good. utilities. Good. And, you know, the location for undergrounding, uh, you know, is, uh, is kind of parallel to that. We've been following that very closely. And the design as presented will accommodate overhead um, and undergrounding, you know, separate, way. You know, but the undergrounding still needs a little <coughs> bit of tweaking. And as, as just mentioned, the finding, the funding piece of it uh, will dictate that, but we've laid it out so it can accommodate both at this time. And just a quick question on Legacy Farms North. Have you had any chance to assess the offloading, uh, the traffic feed to downtown? Is there a you're saying is is the traffic that was projected in line with what that's a better way of saying so it. so the traffic now <laughs> in line with what they had projected um we haven't done any newer counts um I, you know what i can i can look at it because i think legacy was responsible to do um counts over a certain period of time once they open to confirm it may not be directly in the downtown but we can at least compare what was projected and uh and what they're confirming confirmatory counts need to be yeah thank you sure i told him we should have started later pam wax lax 15 smith road so i just as he had asked my question about undergrounding to some extent is that mandated by mass dot is what mandated? undergrounding utilities no 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 okay and the full cost of the eight million for the all the improvements is completely paid for by the state and the federal government. It's a, and yeah, a combination not a town of, appropriation. There's no town appropriation in that eight million at this time. Great. Thank you. Claire Wright, twenty eight Hayden Rose Street. Um, I thank you for this great presentation, for all the work that's gone into it, and um, the town really needs these improvements. I am fully in support of it. Um, however, I would humbly ask um, that we take a, a careful, um, thoughtful, sensitive look at some of the impacts that are proposed for the historic district um, Marathon Way Veterans Memorial Triangle portion of this. Um, I s was a member of the Historic District Commission for 30 years, um, some of those as chairman. And um, this is one of the oldest historic districts in Massachusetts. It was started, I believe, fairly early on when historic districts came into being. Um, it's almost 40 years old. Um, my understanding all those years was that, I, I will say first, the Doughboy Memorial plot is a distinct property that is called out in the historic district bylaw as a property. The Doughboy Monument plot is specified. That's the piece of land it sits on. Um, my understanding all those years was that once a town enacts a historic district and designates the protected properties, which were studied and justified each and every one of them with mass historic and then voted on by the townspeople that this becomes a covenant with history 
this becomes an area that those people 40 years ago protected in such a way that the character, the look, the integrity of these properties would not change. Um, the Doughboy Veterans Memorial Triangle is a significant piece of property, not only for the statue that sits on it, but for the iconic, dramatic setting. That soldier marching forward, the imagery of the triangle, the tip of the spear, which is often referred to when we speak of our troops going into battle. Um, it's photographed, it's dramatic, it's beloved. And it's not something to be lightly cast aside. And I do know that the current historic district took an informal look at it. Um, it's a very important thing to remove, remove one of the protected pieces of property and return it to yet another statue on a large piece of grass. Um, we know throughout our country that the settings for historic structures are very often as important as the structure itself. When you look at how we, we um, the National Mall, the monuments on the National Mall, every one, there was as much discussion over the setting of that monument, where it faced, what it was related to, as the monument itself. Um, so I do believe this is not to be handled lightly. And um, I feel there should be some very good justification for not only obliterating that Veterans Memorial Triangle, which is important to many, but the closing of Marathon Way, um, I would hope that if such a dramatic change were undertaking, it would be for very good reason. And currently, um, I would like to see more justification for why the closing of Marathon Way is an improvement because the way I look at it now, um, there are currently nine parking spaces on Marathon Way. Those will be traded for nine parking spaces on Main Street, um, a more dangerous place to get out of a car than on Marathon Way. Marathon Way also holds the potential for at least three more when the cross hats but bus turning area is eliminated. So you could actually get more on Marathon Way. Um, it is a pressure release valve for traffic getting off of Main Street. Um, making it a one way would allow another out because the traffic certainly will go down into the side streets to get to that entire Ash Street area. So it will have an impact on Park, on Fenton, on Pike, on hold all the way up the street. Um, and furthermore, I also know that we are looking for bicycle connectivity into the, the Upper Charles Trail behind Center School. And again, looking at safety, the bike trail stops at the end of Hayden Row. To put bikers going down Marathon Way is a much quieter, safer route for the bicyclists to access the, the Upper Trails um, Upper Charles Trail than being on their own on East, on Main Street. So um, I would respectfully ask that we, um, I know one of Norman, two of Norman's favorite words are negotiation and collaboration. Um, and I certainly hope we will do that and um, really respect um, the sacred piece of properties around the historic district. Well, I want to I want to thank you very much for your comment, and I, I want to be um, extremely clear that there's a there's a very um, detailed process to um, uh, to secure approval from Mass Historic Commission and the Section 106 with the federal government, and it's something that we're not shying away from. the The information, at least, that we've been provided from the town, and we need to meet and, and work more closely with the Historic District Commission to make sure that we're addressing uh, those needs. So we're not minimizing that in, in any way. We're working on, I mean, we're working on behalf of the town and we want to get their input. Um, th again, some of the info that we were given was this was a preferred to kind of pursue, but I, I agree with the, the words that you chose, negotiation and collaboration. We want to work collaboratively with the uh, Historic District Commission on um, what the best and most uh, 
um, beneficial to the community can be achieved at that location and um, you know from the beginning of my presentation that you know I, I don't want to sound like a broken record that we're we're in this preliminary stage but you know we want their input we value their input input immensely and uh, DOT is not going to look at that um, uh, and say no you don't have to worry about that well you know we're just gonna do it so I, I appreciate your comment and we we do want to make sure that we work with them on the best solutions at that location the best enhancements to the common and and if it's to to make alterations and and look at a different focus then then we're happy to do that thank you so thank you yes you have a question beth kelly five ash street i'm here representing the historic district commission and i'd like to clarify one thing about any changes that would be made in the historic district which would include the common and the doughboy a full report has to be made by the commission a written report that is submitted to the state historic commission and this report is then presented to the town and at a town meeting it must be approved by a two-thirds vote of the town so any adjustments that happen in the area of the doughboy and the common is approved by the entire town takes a two-thirds vote um, I just want to read what we had discussed at our meeting so that it kind of clarifies where we were coming from the Hopkinton Center Historic District Commission is proposing restoring the town common to the configuration shown in the engraving of 1880 essentially this would mean eliminating Marathon Way and incorporating the Doughboy Triangle into the town common. This proposal would enhance the downtown in three major aspects. Number one, pedestrian safety will be enhanced as the distance to cross Main Street will be shortened. Additionally, the new traffic pattern will eliminate confusion for both pedestrians and drivers. Number two, environmentally green spaces provide health benefits to people who frequent the downtown whether they be walkers runners or shoppers number three aesthetically a green downtown is more visually appealing and at the same time it provides a greater area for passive recreational activities so these were things that we discussed at our meeting and we informally submitted this proposal proposal of joining up uh, the doughboy triangle so it's not a done deal but it's something to think about thank you thank you very much for uh, introducing those comments and for your your input all right so i feel like i'm, I'm starting to get <laughs> my voice is going to be gone soon so if you have something compelling please come up and give it give it me all you got i just want some of your water <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm Rob Phipps, 80 Main Thank Street, uh, Phipps Insurance Agency. My dad started it three months before I was born. Therefore, we've been using the parking spaces out front since that time. Uh, I realize a lot of businesses in particular are going to make sacrifices for this project, which seems very worthwhile. There's a lot of bugs to be worked out still, but I see the merits of it. Um, and I appreciate your presentation. Very detailed. You're good at what you do. Thank you. Um, and I like your approach uh, of balance, which every committee, no matter how small or big, should attain or seek to attain. But sometimes balance is 50-50, sometimes 60-40, sometimes 90-10 to one, 10 to 90 to the other. That still counts as balance. I'm concerned about collateral damage in several areas. Considering myself a minor one, we'll adjust, but I mean, we're losing something that we've had for the existence of our business. I'm also concerned about the uh, potential injuries from bike lanes, which were never there before. Hopkinton, to me, downtown is a very dangerous place to ride a bike, and I would never send anybody I cared for down to get a loaf of bread, although you can't anymore, can you? But, <laughs> but you get my point. It's, a, it's a, just a saddle, the sun, the whole works. It's a tough place to bike ride. I'm worried about Pleasant Street. To see those kids struggle down, whether they're in a Hummer or a Civic, they're struggling to take that left coming out of the schools to go down West Main Street. And to think that there's nothing being done 
there bothers me. Something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And we do not live in Iowa or the Maritimes of Canada where pedestrian is king. We've got a lot of new folks in town. They come from urban areas. They come from fast-paced areas. They're bringing that tradition, that value, if you will, to this town. A lot of energy, but not a lot of respect for pedestrians. And learning our stop signs, our mores, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Breaking down, you know, downhill and all that stuff. So at Jackie's point about uh, putting a light, flashing light at certain intersections, I would be strongly in favor of that before someone does get hit and becomes collateral damage. And then you know the light's going to go in then. So I hope enough study is being done at these hot spots <coughs> where you could put in a blinking light ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. What, what else I, I heard, uh, Mr. Phipps, was that on a green arrow at Wood Street, people go through when the arrow's not green because they're so used to it being green. I, I, I can't, I, I'm going to stamp these set of plans at some point in the future, and I hope not to say, well, an average citizen would have known that this is what they should do. We, our, our diligence, and our, you know, we talked uh, about courtesy a little bit uh, from a <clears throat> Excuse me. A few other comments. We'll we'll look more closely as we have um, at the area around Main Street as you as you as you suggested, and um, and then we'll we'll consider some of the input that we've heard tonight, so we can come up with um, you know a better set of drawings and something that uh, is going to address a lot of the comments that were offered here. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, Doug Flannery from the Boston Athletic Association for the uh, Boston Marathon. So we actually have a lot of vested interests, as you can imagine, with all the uh, corridor plans that are going on, especially from <coughs> Ash Street uh, down through Grove Street. I think uh, if and when it's available, if we could get the measurements from curb to curb of that whole corridor, that would help us out with our planning. And I know this is preliminary phase, but as you go along, if we could just keep the information flowing towards us so yes, we can we prepare for every single marathon that comes through until this project is completed. Do you know the height of the uh, bike lane? There's gonna be a little bit of an elevation profile from the, the road. The from elevation from the, from the paved roadway or the parking lane to the bike lane is four inches. Four inches. And then the elevation from the bike lane to the adjacent sidewalk will be a two inch difference. So the overall sidewalk will be six inches higher than the roadway pavement as if it was adjacent yeah. you know, on, on most other applications, but there'll be a four inch and then a two inch so that there's a vertical separation between all three of those modes. Okay, uh, with there, well, we can talk offline if you want, but any kind of consideration for the bike lanes, uh, especially from Grove Street to Ash Street to kind of be almost level, maybe separated by some pavers so that, you know, because we have to put a barricade system no, in place. No, I, I know you have and to, so and it's something we, I think you mentioned to us at the uh, chamber meeting a yeah. few weeks back. Yeah. And it is something we're going to look at okay. um, a little bit more closely and, and keep an open dialogue. And we appreciate and, and we're um, uh, interested in your input. It's, it's a little bit about some of the standards and the separation and um, what might be, in, and I don't want to minimize the marathon to the, to the other 364 days yeah. uh, per se, but the um, separated bike lane and the separated uh, lane to sidewalk, bike lane to sidewalk, those those are for safety factors, you know, through the other 360 plus yep. days. Totally understand. But we'll totally we'll look at it with, um, and we'll keep, as I said, keep an open dialogue on those items. And I suppose the consideration will be for the construction or the kind of the assembly of everything going on during that third week of April, which yes, is very absolutely. important to us, will be considered. When I had to do um, Route 30 in, uh, in uh, Newton several, you know, probably 10 plus years ago now, yeah. We had to make sure we restricted because you have, you know, that's the route as you were going through there when, when we did that and had to restrict some of those pieces and make sure those were incorporated into the contract documents. Absolutely, in this case, will be the same type of situation. Okay, and I think the last point is uh, actual marathon way itself, and I certainly appreciate uh, the Veterans Triangle as a veteran myself. Um, and then for the marathon, uh, that is a very important piece to us um, and so I can understand both sides of what's uh, trying to be accomplished here but just to put it out there that we use that marathon way 
to get our athletes with disabilities to the start line. So our wheelchair participants mm -hmm. and our hand cycle participants that come from center school, uh, that's very important to us. And certainly there's other ways to go through park to Hayden Road to access the start area. But uh, for all considerations, we'd certainly want to put that across the table. No, I appreciate, again, yep. comments that we're not always aware of, and I, and I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, John. Thank you very much for this evening's uh, presentation. Um, I came to Hopkinton in uh, 2005. Um, I'm the owner of Hopkinton Gourmet, a little coffee store downtown. Uh, population then was about 12,000 and now we're up to about 16, 17,000. So you talk about 17,000 cars going through. Now you talked about the proposed, um, there used to be four parking spaces on Grove Street. Um, I'm sorry, they used to, there used to be four parking spaces uh, about four years ago. They were taken away 2012, 13. I'd, I'd have to defer to the town I mean, to that but. But you're talking about putting back parking spaces on Grove? And Just in, so, yeah, in that area adjacent. And if yeah. so, where? On Because I get up at, I go to work at 5.30 in the mornings and I've seen the traffic the last five or six years as everyone has. I mean, I'm probably the, one of the oldest people up in town. Uh, I get up at six o'clock. The speed of the traffic is pretty scary. And eliminating parking spaces you know, when I came here 12 years ago, I knew that this was coming. This is here now. Mm -hmm. This is what we're dealing with. Um, it's been very well explained, planned out. Progress is being made. Housing is obviously population growth. Um, I'm David versus Goliath in this. I mean, I'm looking at the bigger picture. I'm not looking out for myself, like Mr. Phipps on insurance. We have inherited parking spots yeah, we have six indirectly yep. outside our shop. Yeah, I mean, they don't belong to the shop, they belong to the town. I would say 95% of our customers stop right outside, two next to us, and three opposite. Now, they are going to be eliminated. You know, that's just progress, that's just the way it is. Um, but when you talk of 98 parking spaces, you're going to alleviate 12. You know, you've added four at the six at the police station, four more in downtown. If, when this project goes forward, 2019, when it's all being funded, what are the options? John, you know, St. John's Church, you've got allocated 40 spots. Now, again, it's not from a selfish perspective. I'm looking at it from when the kids come out of school on early release. Yeah, you know, there's maybe five, six days a year. The cars that we have currently now, they do act as somewhat of a buffer. So I'm just kind of wondering, I'm sure that's been factored in, but you've got six, seven, eight hundred young teenagers running around Hopkinton. And um, we have 21 businesses on Main Street within a half a mile, from Mr. Phipps up to the bank and the Korean church. Mm -hmm. So there's 28 parking spaces within that time frame, within the allocation. Mm -hmm. Um, for, our, for us, parking is gone, it's, it's going to close me down, but I'm, I'm okay with that because I'm looking at the bigger picture. I'm just trying to see what additional spots, if any, where would they be going on Main Street? Because if they go to St. John's, great, 40 spots, the library's going to be reopened probably November of this year, um, the flashing lights, tremendous. It's been talked about flashing lights. Speed bumps are always an option in England. We have a lot of speed bumps in a lot of downtown areas, and it really works. I've never heard that in this conversation this evening. When I see cars and buses going up and down Main Street, 6, 6, 15, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, and that's a concern. So I don't know, speed bumps, is that an option as well? Speed bumps are typically not introduced on arterials sure. like this, but it is something we would, you know, work with the town and then the public safety officials. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we hear from public safety officials that, you know, they don't want that kind of stuff that's impeding their movement to uh, an emergency, but um, and it's not something that's generally used on arterials like that. Okay. 
Thank you very much, John. Thank you for your input and your you. comments. Thank you. Hi, uh, Greg Nazer. Uh, my wife and I own 42 Main Street and 3036 Main Street, and uh, everything you're doing up there is phenomenal, as Dave and everybody else said. Um, it's a great job, and it's long. I've been in town for 22 years, and obviously, uh, I believe in the town. Uh, my wife and I do because we've invested heavily in downtown. Um, we talk about parking. In fact, uh, that rendering right there is a little scary for me because I see parking spots and I will I, to, to Norman's uh, point and to Dave's point parking 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 um, when you start bringing density to a downtown and you want to increase um, bike lanes and you want a green, a green space and you want businesses to thrive you need this thing called parking you just need it um, one and two and three three over by the police station and four on a side street and that it, it really I don't believe it will do it I didn't know the statistic I think that was pretty uh, dramatic that there's 21 businesses and we're gonna have 28 on uh, you know on street parking uh, it's the lifeblood to a lot of businesses like Dave's uh, Chris over here with yogurt beach and I know that there's bills and 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 others so I look at this rendering there and I see that I don't know what uh, the town is swapping but I see a parking lot that used to have um, in the rendering at least used to have parking spaces and now they're not parking spaces where there's cars that actually look like they're going from the front to the back so every and I love this I, I do every place I see though is that we are reducing this commodity called parking which is what we need and we need it desperately and to have a thriving downtown I, I don't know how we can do it without it I really don't um, you know, our, our, our spot, we have 42 parking places uh, on Wolcott Street, okay? Th that would be sufficient maybe for what we have, but it's not sufficient for all the other businesses and, and people that we're gonna be driving on there with the new, you know, it's great to say that we have St. John's, but St. John's is three, four blocks away from the actual destination. So all I would say is it, it's a wonderful plan. I love it. Um, I hope that the town gives more consideration to um, actually putting something in the appropriations that we will buy private property, not land swap, not try to do it the, I'll say the cheap way, because you need capital to do this. And, and there are places in town that are suitable, but you have to go out and do that. So I'm just saying I, it's a wonderful plan, I love it, but without downtown parking, I fear that at one point it's gonna choke off the commerce and the prosperity that it's actually trying to bring. So, thank you for your comment. Appreciate that. So I don't have to say the same thing. <laughs> thank you, Scott. <laughs> Hello, Ed Lee, Chief of Police. I just want to say that uh, anything that has to do with uh, making uh, Main Street safer, I fully support. But the other thing we deal with all the time is quality of life issues. And one of the big complaints is traffic congestion downtown. I think this helps alleviate that. Um, everybody's done a wonderful job working together. We'll still continue to work out the snags and people's concerns any way we can on the law enforcement side. But I think, uh, you know, it's a great plan and uh, people put a lot of hard work into this. And uh, we'll certainly be as creative as possible as so we can help in any way with both the uh, residents and the businesses. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. Appreciate those comments. Have we exhausted every item? Because I told you, I'm starting to, you know, it's quarter and nine. I figured, you know, I had probably a voice till nine o'clock and over a little bit of a cold, but. Um, Norman, any closing yeah. thoughts or anyone else? Yes. Oh, oh. One more comment. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, just with uh, Diane McCall again, 52 West Elm. In thinking about the parking, I'm wondering if there have been any discussions with Hopkinton Drug or CVS about the space behind their building as being useful for you know, pedestrians who might want to park other I, than I would the defer space. to the town on, on a lot of those negotiations and discussions. Y yes, we have had those discussions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. And, that, and that's why at the beginning of most um, selectman meetings, we have uh, a, uh, executive session 
because when we do get into negotiations, we, with anybody, no matter what it is, we really can't. That stuff really has to stay quiet for a while until negotiations are firmed up. I just want to um, make one comment, though, that I think it is worth bearing in mind that with the decommissioning of Center School <coughs> next September, and I'm sure you folks are figuring this in, um, during the school year, many or if mo most of those parking spaces around the common are occupied by the school teachers. Uh, that, if you include the spaces on Marathon Way right now that has the potential for a couple more, you're looking at probably 30 plus parking spaces that are going to be freed up, um, as well as you know perhaps area in front of the school that was used for parent drop off. So there's there's a lot of potential to relieve some of the pressure um, with those spaces around the common. Thank you. Good point. Yeah. If I yeah, if I can share a personal yeah. story. Yeah. Um, I've been doing public works for 32 years and about 25 years ago my hometown where I still live went through the same process and I happen to be working in the engineering office so this is a little bit of deja vu um, but we went through a process it was very similar to this it was right through the downtown happened to be a state road so there were some little different intricacies but I have to say that when you take a uh, a road like Main Street Hopkinton, Main Street Holden, uh, and you, you make these improvements, it changes the quality of life dramatically. My wife and I were able to walk over a mile without any breaks in the sidewalk. We know that it's safe, it's separated from the traffic. Uh, driving through town, it is safer to drive through town. We've got the signalized intersections with two lanes to help the traffic move through. So it, it has been a long process. I remember when I started here six and a half years ago, we had the Blue Sky meeting at the fire department. We have addressed many of the, the challenges that were identified then. We're not there yet. We're not at 100% design. So this feedback is great to help us fine tune and hone the design. So I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight and sharing your input, which will help us to, to make the design better and stronger for the community. Yeah, um, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out, taking time off your busy schedules uh, to share your thoughts. Uh, I can assure you I recorded almost everything that was said. I will sit down with the town staff as well as with our consultants, uh, and my pitch to them would be simple. Uh, we want to keep the lines of communication open. We want this to be an open dialogue. We want this to continue to be a collaborative effort. By the end of the day, I believe my charge is to make sure that whatever plan is presented eventually incorporates and reflects the town's collective vision. I can tell you one other thing that we learned today, I think I'm challenging the consultants right away, is to make sure that whatever plan we put forward specifically identifies how we're going to educate the drivers, the public, and everybody else in regards to all this new stuff that we want to bring along. Again, I want to thank the Senior Center for offering this location, Dev Del Torrio leading the team, um, Maria Glynn for providing the refreshments, and all of you for your time. Thank you so much. Good night. If, if